Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for another Jeep video. Uh, we're going to work on the engine a little bit today. And um, when I was putting the oil pan back on, um, I noticed that one of the bolts wouldn't tighten. So we're going to deal with that today. But first, let's flip the damned engine over. So one of the nice things about having pulled the engine out and gotten it balanced is that I can flip it over. just this easily and boom it's that much easier to work on and indeed we do have some things to do down here so this bolt won't tighten what do we have oil down here for hmm. I have oil in a couple places down here and you know this is entirely too recent for the <laughs> oil. Um, I honestly, I don't know why there's oil down here. I don't think it came out of here. Sure hope it didn't come out of the oil pan gasket, considering I just changed the stupid thing. But this oil, this engine was filthy. So, uh, let's find that. Eleven millimeters. And these were like 200 inch pounds, which is the bottom end of what my torque wrenches can do. So it was this one here that just wouldn't tighten. Everything else was tightened. So it looks like I've got two of these that won't tighten. So this one and this one both appear to be stripped. So we're going to fix that. And uh, the way we're going to fix it is we're going to take these bolts out and we're going to put a helicoil in. And a helicoil is essentially the process is we're going to drill out the old threads and then we're going to install or we're going to tap them and then we are going to uh, install a spring. And the spring will be replacement. Um, replacement threads that are very durable. And it's a perfect thing to use for aluminum, which is what the timing chain cover is. You know, and your other option would be to replace the timing chain cover. And that, frankly, would be a pain in the ass. Because then we'd have to take... Um, the harmonic balancer, the water pump, this, um, you just have to take a lot apart to deal with it. So, uh, I will post a link in the video to all the tools that I'm using. Now, I'm not going to post a link to this, I'm not going to post a link to a torque wrench, I figure you can find those on your own. But I will post a link to tail coil, um, drill, you know, and that's that's the important stuff. So this is a helicoil kit. Um, it's about eighteen dollars. It comes with a special tap. Uh, damn it! Where's the special drill bit? I'm not there. You know what? Uh, needs a seventeen sixty fourth drill bit. So I might have that. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so I have 
have a 1764 drill. I got lucky. Um, you can buy this with the drill bit and without, and I somehow screwed up and bought it without the drill bit. So we're going to drill out these. And before we do, I want to take a reading on how deep that hole is. So one of the things you can use is a tool like this. Try not to throw the battery on the ground or the cover. Um, so one of the things you can do is stick this all the way out, two and a quarter inches, and then bottom it out in the hole and read it. So it's 0.8 inches. So if we mark this with 0.3 quarters, we should be good to go. And one of the easy ways to do this is to take some tape Okay, and I don't want to go all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to mark it right there. So this should be approximately three quarters of an inch deep. And again, I don't, I don't need to make this hole, I just need to enlarge it. So I'll put a little flag here, double check that I'm less than three quarters of an inch and less than the bolts. The bolts are half of this. Now these repla these coils come in different lengths but this is going to be more than sufficient for what we're working on. So we're done with this. You need a drill. It does not have to be anything magical so I'm going to use one of my smaller drills just to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be a big honking drill that's really powerful. Um, this is a whole lot easier to do with the engine out, but you could do this with the vehicle in. And really, heel coils are, you know, in this particular case, if you were taking the timing chain cover off, I would tell you just replace the damn thing. Um, because timing chain cover is like 20 bucks. This kit's like 20 bucks, but if you're not taking the timing chain apart, this might save you a lot of time. So we're going to do this one first. Scary moments. So at this point, I have ruined the threads that are in there, and I've created swarf, which is drill bits, pieces, or drill tailings, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to take my handy dandy shot back here. rest of them out but it's just not going to cooperate. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some WD-40 in here. All right now it's going to do two things. It's going to lubricate it because the next thing we've got to do is we've got to tap the hole and tapping is just simply the process by which you thread a hole. If you are threading a rod, and it's called 
It's still tapping, but you're, you're, you're not tapping a hole. All right, this is a really, really shitty package. It's hard to get into. So this is a uh, tap handle, and you really want to use something like this because it will make this much simpler. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be hard to get into. Uh, a ratcheting one would be a lot better. So we're going to... I bought this for this, but it's not going to work, so I'm going to get a ratchet. Now, this is a quarter inch square, and this is a 12 point quarter inch bit, and they will fit perfectly together. So if you've got a tight spot, this will work. You can cause trouble with this, so this is not the best way to do this. But this will work. So we're just going to take this down until it stops. It's cutting the threads in the aluminum right now. That's probably getting real close. Yep, there it is. Now, the cuttings are in the grooves, so we're going to wipe them off because they're not going to do us any good in this other hole. Some downward force will help it get established. And then let it do the work. If it seems to bind, you want to stop and back up. Okay, so now I'm going to try and wipe off the little bits that are sitting here. The WD-40 floated some of the little pieces of metal up and out of the hole. So I'm going to flush it with WD-40 again.
Alright, and then I'm going to vacuum it. Get the uh, next two pieces. Okay, so now we need two of these coils. So we'll fish these out. This is a really shitty package. And then there's an insulation tool. Now, the insulation tool is kind of interesting the way it works. The installation tool has a little lip right here where my thumbnail is. And the way this works is there's a little tang on the end of this. So you screw this together until it catches the tang. Now you can install the helicoil, which is a special spring. Let me find something for this. So I three sixteenths is about the right size. I'm gonna start it by hand. Thought I felt a mosquito. Okay. Now I'm gonna get a ratchet just to take the load off my fingers. Okay. You're not trying to torque this in. All you're trying to do is bring this all the way in. Oh, that's currently not the right size. So we can use this shitty ass tool. What you're looking for is uh, the helicoil to go below the surface of the hole you drilled. Okay, so I think we're there. I'm gonna remove the installation tool to look. Okay, so I'm I'm where I want to be. I'm gonna bring the camera a little closer. So now we've screwed a spring in here, and the inside diameter of the spring is quarter twenty. All right. The next part is the magic. So you take the installation tool. Give me a second. Okay, so there are different ways to do this, and um, they recommend using a punch to snap off the, the end. There it goes. So now the, that piece breaks off, and we'll flip the engine over before we put the bolt in. So I'm going to bring the camera over where you guys can see closely what I'm doing with the second one. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this on so I've engaged the little piece on there and then I'm going to set this in here And you could do this with your fingers. I don't have the finger strength, so I'm using the ratchet. Oh, and that's right, the ratchet doesn't actually fit, so I'm using this shitty 
tap handle, it was only six bucks. Okay, pretty sure that's enough. So I will extract this. Need to get down below. No, that's not quite it. So I need to go a little further. So we will take a punch and we will knock the tang out. All right, tang's gone. Let me put some tools away real quick. Gonna do uh, a couple of interesting things here. So I want to positively know that I got that piece out before I put a bolt in. So I'm going to cover the hole with pieces of electrical tape. should have hmm. apparently it did not come out oh, I thought we would get it out so it did not come out all right let me um, see what else I got it doesn't matter the bolts aren't going to be that deep um, at this point we can install the bolts and they should torque so there is our quarter now I'm gonna add thread lock to this because I don't I don't trust it to stay still and I need it to stay still um, the helicoil is a spring made from square wire and so the end result is that you get really good um, threads. And let me see where I put my torque wrench. Okay, I'm not gonna, it actually needs to be lower. It's so like, these are real soft bolts. So now that's torquing. If torquing works. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Now, uh, this bolt has some junk in it. Um, but we can actually extract the, th the set of threads here by unscrewing them. Okay, so there's the threads. 
you want to be very careful when you do that not to get a metal splinter and this is the other way to apply thread lock this is Harbor Freight's finest one dollar thread lock it will do the job just fine and this is not specific to Jeep so you know any mechanical application that you strip a thread in you can do this okay so at this point I have repaired both threads and we're good to go.